So let's take these, turn them into the highest quality digital copies we can, while also keeping the file size nice and small. What we're gonna do in this video is cover the settings that, that I use in Handbrake. It's gonna be a simple video that shows you, in my opinion, the definitive settings you should be using. And once we get those settings dialed in, I'll show you how to create a preset so that every time you open it up, you can just go back and use that preset without having to do a lot of fussing around. This is Handbrake. I'm running the dark theme, so if it looks a little different, do not panic. You can change it to the dark theme and the preferences. When you first open it, you need to drag and drop a file. This can be any MKV, MP4, AVI, whatever. I'm gonna grab my massive 4K version of Ghost in the Shell. It's 57.2 gigabytes. I'm gonna drop it in there. But you can do this with anime you've grabbed on the internet. While this is processing, be sure to use a VPN. They didn't pay me to do this. This is what I use every time, and I'll show you how I do it. I use private internet access because it's the lowest price for the fastest performance that I can find. And also, regardless of what anybody else says, they've never had any sort of leaks, and no one has ever gotten in trouble using this service, so I'm using them based upon their price, performance, and their track record. The protocol section, if you have fast internet, be sure to use WireGuard, because with OpenVPN, it usually caps me at around 100 to 150. With WireGuard, I can get five, six, 700 sometimes megabits per second. And then one other thing I wanna show you is split tunneling. So you can come down here and say, okay, for the BitTorrent program and some other stuff, use the VPN, and for other programs, like if you wanted to say Steam or whatever, you could say bypass the VPN so you can get full speed. I have a link in the description to get a pretty good deal, so check that out. Now I'm gonna cover all of these tabs right here because that's how you make your video. I always use MKV. There's a million reasons for it, but MKV is what you should be using, especially if you want to be able to remux, as in like adding different subtitles later on and stuff like that. Much easier to mess with this container. And then I pass through the common metadata. The dimensions, just make sure it's on custom. Don't leave it on automatic because sometimes this program will look and be like, oh, I think I see black bars, I should crop. No, 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 it's it would be very weird for you to ever wanna crop the original source material unless something's very strange, you can change this, but leave it on custom and all zero. Over here, you can pick if you want 1080p or 4K or whatever. I'm gonna do a backup of this one in 1080p. And then of course, no borders. Filters, I leave all this the way it is. We don't need to mess with it. Over here on video, this is the most important page and this is the most important part of the page, the quality. But we'll go through this first. You wanna do H.265 10-bit. Why not 8-bit? Well, the difference in file size is nominal between the regular you know, X.265 and 10-bit. And 12-bit, I haven't really noticed any difference. So 10-bit gives you more colors so that you don't have any color banding where you can see like the different lines and stuff like that. So I use that. And then for frame rate, make sure you keep it on same as source and make sure it's a constant frame rate. The encoder preset options. Now normally it'll be on medium or fast. You wanna bring this down to slow. This just gives the algorithm a little bit more time to make things look nicer. I can't notice any difference beyond slow. Now the quality up here on the top, the farther you go to the right, the higher the quality. And if you're doing 4K, you might want to consider doing like 15 or 16. Once you get past that, it's going to be placebo. And once you get all the way over here, the file size is going to be larger than the original because it's going to do a lossless recreation. So leave it somewhere around 20. Now for most anime, I've found that at comfortable sitting distances, 24 produces a tiny file that looks completely awesome. Now for most movies, no, it, you're going to need to be around 21, 20, somewhere in that range. But for anime, 24 looks pretty good. There's a caveat. You need to use the animation setting. And that's available as long as you're using H.265 or H.264. There's an animation tuning. That makes the file size smaller. And it also knows, oh, this is an anime. It does not work for 3D animation. If you have a show that has a bunch of 3D stuff in it, you're gonna have to leave this on none. Put it on animation for traditional animation and you'll be just fine. Now there's also one other caveat. For older movies, you have a lot of grain and animation will ignore a lot of that grain or smooth it out. There's a grain setting. If you have something that has a lot of grain, you're gonna to wanna to turn this on, even though the file size is going to be larger. And I'll show you some differences right now with, with Ghost in the Shell because that has a lot of grain. This is the 4K version straight out, you know, without any editing or anything like that. There we go, this is the animation setting. See how the grain has become like blocky and all that? So the grain has a lot of information. It doesn't look too bad in motion, and if you're sitting back, but this is a much smaller file, but you're losing a lot of that information. And there's the grain setting. The file size was still pretty small, but we were able to retain some of that grain. 
All right, this is the 4K version by the window in the beginning. See, so look at the grain there. Now, when you're using the animation setting, that's what it looks like. See, the grain is completely gone now. This looks a lot like a, a modern anime all of a sudden. You feel like we've turned Ghost in the Shell into a modern anime. And if you like this look better than the grain, well, let me go to the, there's the grain setting. There's the grain setting versus the animation setting. If you like the smooth look better than the grain, more power to you, you do you. I like the grain, so I'm keeping it that way. Here's another one, animation setting. And there's the grain setting. You can see the grain mostly in the dark area. Like look there, the dark area. See it up here. Here we are, animation setting. And notice when we go to the grain setting, the grain gives you the uh, almost the feel of it being a little bit sharper. But from comfortable sitting distance, you know, sit back a little bit, I think the animation looks pretty good. Again, it's all up to you. Now, when there's a lot of lights and things going on in the dark and there's tons of grain, you may get some frames like this when it comes to the animation for the older anime. There's the grain setting. See, everything's sharpened up. But there's just too much grain information with the lights flashing around and stuff, so it, it becomes confusing. On TechSyndicate.com, there's going to be an article, and I will link all of these pictures on there so you can go through the gallery yourself. Back to this. So to sum up, this, these are the settings you use. Keep it on constant quality right here. And, uh, you know, if you really care about it, a little lower, but 24 is what I'm doing for most of my anime with the animation setting, especially for new anime. And then your average bit rate here, ignore this. This is the old school way of doing things. It takes a lot longer. You get file sizes that are bigger. This is a much more scientific way to do it. All right, let's talk audio. You have a couple different tracks to choose from, so make sure you pick the one. Both of these are unknown, but... It should say like Japanese or English or whatever, and sometimes it'll say 5.1. So I'm gonna explain the codecs really quickly. There are a couple codecs which are lossless. If you see FLAC or TrueHD, those are lossless, and those should be compressed because they're huge. So this is just raw audio here, and that's why we're gonna be doing a compression. Now the bitrate, let me explain this to you. We don't need it to be that high for stereo. 128 or 160 is plenty. So the way the bitrate works is you take the number of channels you have and then divide it by the bitrate. So if you have Two channels, that'll be 64 bits per channel. So this one doesn't have 5.1, but if we put it on 5.1, you're going to want to bring this up a little bit. Maybe here, or just make sure that each channel has, you know, 60 to, to 90 bits. So do the math a little bit. It shouldn't take too long. I like to go overboard just a little bit because I love audio, but Opus is also the best when it comes to file size versus uh, fidelity. It's better than AAC or anything else here on the list. Now, there's sometimes when you're going to get a something you downloaded online or whatever, and it's going to already have compressed audio. Well, I usually don't like to compress that anymore. I just want to pass that through, and I'll show you how we do that. All right, so I threw my Blu-ray copy of uh, Project Echo in here so I can show you some different audio stuff. By the way, it's available on Blu-ray Blu finally. Just the first one, though. So this one uh, has AAC audio. That's the Japanese there. And we're going to do AAC pass-through. So we don't actually have to do any audio rendering. It's just going to render the video and then pass through the audio. Now let's show you how to set up the subtitles. All the tracks are showing up here that are in English. That's what I have it set to do. And you can see over here the titles, English, English Forced, and then Commentary. If you want to keep the commentary tracks and all that kind of stuff, you can do that. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to watch the commentary, so I'm going to remove that. And if I need the commentary, I can go back to my Blu-ray on the shelf. And I just want the English subtitles, and I want to make them default so that whenever it plays, this comes up by default. I will say don't do Burn In because it takes the subtitles and it writes them to the video so that you cannot ever turn them off. I just leave it like this. Default means that it automatically plays. So you can put that on if you want to. So if we have everything set up the way we want, we just click on add to queue and there it is in our queue. But guess what? Everything stayed the same right here. We didn't, none of this changed. So check this out. If we were like, you know what? I want to see how different it looks, but let's change it to the green. You know, I want to render it a couple times and we can add that to queue as well. Now we have to change the name. I'll put grain and we can add that to queue. And now we have two here, one with grain and one without. So that's really easy. Excuse my dark theme, it's being strange. Let's say you're worried that you're going to spend a lot of time processing this and then not like the finished product, or maybe you're not, you're going to say 24 is not enough. So start the queue. And since we have an MKV file, we can easily check this. So here in my folder, you can see it's, it's already showed up there. It says zero. It's, it's doing stuff. So we can, we can right click on this and play it with our favorite media player, VLC, or I'm using media player classic. And now check this out. We've got six minutes rendered so far, so we can cut in and see, does 24 look good? Does the, do those settings look good? You know? You know, this looks pretty good to me. It's up to you. So let's make sure our subtitles are working. Audio track's working. Subtitle track. So that's how it looks. Looks pretty good to me. What is she eating? That's how you can check your work. 
just open up the file in the middle of while it's rendering. And as it renders, you can keep opening that same file and see a little bit more of the show, a little bit more of the movie. All right, now let's make your life really easy by creating some presets. So we've got this here. We know 24 looks good. We know the animation setting looks good. So let's make an anime preset by clicking on presets up here on the top and save as new preset. Custom presets. I've got a category here called anime. You can create a new category because I've got a bunch. Anime 24. Now we need to select audio and subtitle behavior. Audio behavior is probably my favorite thing. When it comes to audio behavior, I want to pass through all the lossy audio because I don't want to recompress that stuff. So like MP3, AAC, AC3, all that stuff. Uh, even DTS is probably good to pass through. I won't be re-rendering these, but FLAC, DTS HD, and True HD. True HD and FLAC are lossless. DTS HD sounds pretty good, but I'll, I'll recompress that down to Opus. Whenever you have something online and it's one of these, it will just pass through. You know, you'll get the audio pass through. But if it's not, then it'll be Opus. This bit rate's a little bit high for Opus. You could get away with... You know, 160 is going to sound crystal clear for most people. So we got this on auto pass through, falling back to Opus. That's all we need there. And then you can pick your languages, but I just leave this alone because the audio is something I fuss with on every single track or every single thing I do. And now we'll do the subtitle settings. Okay, I can say like, okay, as long as it's English for me. Oh, I've already got it moved to the right. So yeah, you just move English to the right and left and you can, you know, put them in a hierarchical order. So if it finds one of those, it'll automatically throw that in the list. So right now mine is putting all English stuff on the list. That's good enough for now. And then you click on add and it adds it to your presets. If you also wanna do one for the grain setting, or maybe you wanna do one at a little bit higher quality for some of your favorite anime, or if you're doing 4K, 4K you do need higher quality. Then you can come up to presets and add a preset for that. I've already got a few anime presets made up here on the top as you can see, and we've got the 5.1 preset as well. Every single time I throw you know, a new source in here, I check the video, I do a quick check of the audio and make sure that everything's good. And I do a quick check of the subtitles and usually click on default, but that's it. It just takes a couple clicks and then I add the queue. This is going to make your anime library significantly smaller. I was able to take the Evangelion library. I have uh, each file was two gigabytes and I compressed it down to about three to 400 megabytes per episode. So huge savings on space on the hard drive. So hopefully now this has given you the power to render all of your anime, the highest quality possible, but also the smallest size. Hope it helped you understand some of this stuff. If you have questions, please put them in the comments or over on the forum. And again, and also I'm going to have all the images from Ghost in the Shell and maybe a couple other anime all in a gallery on techsyndicate.com. And there's also going to be a link to the private internet access. Be sure when you're messing around on these websites, downloading stuff, you're using a VPN. All right, see you next time.